What's up YouTube, it's JB Tech Fanatic and I'm back again with another video. As always, I'd like to start this video by thanking each of you for joining me. If you have not yet subscribed, I'd be so honored if you'd consider. And of course, if you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And if you want to know when the latest content is available, don't forget to click the notifications to on. We are back in the kitchen with part two on Samsung's latest four door flex smart hub refrigerator. Now part one, we covered pretty much in depth the inside of the refrigerator and all of the actual core refrigerator features and what I think about them. And in part two, we are going to cover the smart features, which of course comes from the hub itself. Now we're going to go into depth with this. So hopefully I answer all the questions you have, but of course, if I miss anything, reach me in the comments at any time. Let's get started. First, we're gonna start with view inside. Now, of course, this utilizes the cameras that are inside, but it's more than just that. As you can see, I try to place everything front and forward with the label facing. This is gonna do nothing but make the system work better, recognize the products easier, and also give you the ability to take a snapshot photo if needed and input them manually if it is not registering properly. Now again, the camera system is in the door. You always wanna make sure these cameras are nice and clean and that there's no moisture buildup or you know, if it gets any fingerprints on there, it's not gonna help the situation. So give them a nice wipe down every now and then and you should have no issues. It first gives you three tips that you need to follow if you want this to work. Number one, items not in plain view of the camera inside the door or placed behind other items may not be recognized. Two, place food or items with its most identifying feature or brand label facing the door. And three, if an item changes shape, it may not be recognized. So go ahead and hit confirm. Here we have our inside refrigerator look, and then we also have food list here. As you can see, we have the option for tags or to hide tags. Tags are what you see, corn tortillas, tortilla seasoning, grapes, chocolate, meat. Now, if you ever want to add something, all you need to do is hold down the item and it's going to pull up your food list and it's going to take a photo. All you gotta do is go ahead and click, go ahead and write in, in this um, case, kiwi. We got kiwi fruit. Once that's done, it's going to give, you know, expiration date, three days, click add. The more you do that, the better these features are going to work. In addition to this, if it picks up something and it's not correct, all you have to do, if you want, this says grapes, it's correct, but I'm just gonna show you. Hold down on grape and you would change it to whatever it was. Let's just say it was soda. Type in soda, hit add, and you're done. Again, the more you correct mistakes and the more you do this with items that it doesn't pick up, the better it's going to get. Next, we have food list. Now, this is where it gets interesting. So, I recommend taking the time and putting all of the food that you normally get, especially if you have favorites and brands, because this is going to help you with your shopping list and give you recipes to create, you know, different things to eat with you and your family. Now, you just click a few items that you want to try to make a recipe out of. Once they're clicked, go ahead and click search recipes. Based off of that, it will give you suggestions of what you can cook. Now, what's great about this is you can also search more if you wanna go more in depth for those of you that are learning to cook. This is basically a virtual recipe book that's really unlimited. Um, you can select favorites, but what you wanna look at is the directions and instructions, and this gives you detailed. Now, if you wanna to go to dinner, let's just go ahead and click this here. What it's gonna show us is it's gonna tell us 14 ingredients, how many calories. It's going to tell us what's not on our food list, so this is what we need to get. We can actually send that to our shopping list, send it to a meal planner if you're one that plans your meals in advance, and you can even buy stuff online that's needed. Now, it also gives you detailed directions on what to do, so if it's a cook time, it will tell you everything you need to know. I went to a different one to show you. So we have prep time, 20 minutes, cook time. We have the calories and then ingredients here again, and then our directions. Now, 
Here's something that's really cool, cook mode. Cook mode will actually lead you through step by step and it will actually talk to you instead of you needing to read the directions. So I'll just give you a brief example. Follow the recipe by listening to it step by step. When you hit start, Fry the onion and celery in one TBSB oil over a low heat until they start to sell. So basically she talks to you and tells you what you need to do. Once you get to the last segment, you can actually set your timer here also and you're ready to go. Now when it comes to apps, here's what you need to know. We have Amazon Dash, Amazon Music, and Ring. Now the reason why I bring this up is Dash is a quick, easy reorder system. You can put your favorite stuff on there and it gives you these buttons that you can just simply click when you need it to be delivered and you're good to go. But this also is important because Amazon, of course, owns Ring now. So those of you wanting to use the hub to see your cameras, remember any Samsung SmartThings camera will work and any Ring indoor or outdoor camera or doorbells are visible through your hub. Now, when it comes to apps, obviously there's a lot of money involved with these companies. So it's not an open market where you have tons to download like you would on your phone. So it's more about the partnerships that Samsung has built, but they do have really popular items right now like Grubhub where you can order right from your refrigerator. You also have Instacart, um, Purdue Farms, ShopRite. And then of course we looked at the smart recipes we have weather, tune in music, again, Amazon music, and then of course, Spotify, which is more or less owned by Samsung. So you're gonna get that in most of all of their stuff. Um, and then we have a few other unique features like whiteboard. Let's go ahead and click on that. Whiteboard is a modern addition to your refrigerator as when I was a kid, we had the magnetic letters. And then of course we all have whiteboards. This is built in pretty cool to use it. All you do is hit the plus sign. Now what's great about this is you can actually view this on Samsung smart things also. So if you want to write a note to your kids or your wife or husband or whoever, not only would they be able to see it on the refrigerator, but you can also send it to them to their mobile device. Now, pretty cool. Quick look. You have stickers to use. My kids love this. You can actually draw in different colors. They have different uh, utensils and then you can do different sizes. I mean, it's pretty good, right? I mean, you wanna draw a smiley face, but another thing that just adds a unique aspect to it. You can also record a voice message. This is great for birthdays, holidays, Valentine's Day, whatever. You also have these little memos you can leave yourself. Um, I think they're kind of like those, you know, little sticky memo pads you could put all over. So all you would do is you can click on this and then you can leave memos. And again, it gives you all the same options of the whiteboard. This is great if you're setting your agenda, you know, pretty elaborate. You can do everything you can do on this calendar that you would need to, to put your schedule or events. So it's just nice to have it right here on the refrigerator. And again, it can be synced with your mobile device. Now, for the apps that might not be present, we do have the ability for internet shortcuts. As you can see here, we have Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest, Google, Twitter, basically everything you need, you can actually now use on the hub itself, as it has a full web browser also. But if you wanna to go to YouTube, we'd simply click YouTube, First time we do this, it tells us that we can add shortcuts to your home screen and family board by simply pressing this little house with the plus. Here we have my channel, look at that. Um, but uh, you know, you can scroll through videos and then if you choose one that you wanna watch, all you gotta do, just press. So you can have where it's kind of up here and you can scroll or if you want just the video, you simply do that. But it's just nice to have this. And again, if you wanna use YouTube for cooking, um, this is just another option. And then, you know, during breakfast, if your kids wanna watch the refrigerator, you can also sync this with your mobile device or your Samsung TV. Now, since we are essentially on the web right now using a web browser, Samsung's, 
I wanted you to pay close attention to the options on the bottom. Now on the bottom, of course, we have back or forward, home, um, your favorites, and then of course we have search, we have lock, but pay attention to the settings here because this is how you can change it to a full web browser. First, you can set your homepage, which I have Google, but you can do whatever you'd like. But if you click on content settings, here's where you can do desktop view. Also, you have a pop-up blocker and you have JavaScript now. So this is something that was not available in the beginning, but this essentially allows you to do pretty much anything you need to on the hub itself. And since we're here also, you always have quick access to Bixby. And then this is just like your cell phone. We have our Windows button where you press and each thing that you have open is available, home, back, and then you can actually turn notifications on and off right here, which will pull down the top screen. You can turn down the volume like I did. You also have your quick Wi-Fi, mic, smart view, screen off, and settings toggle. And then of course, brightness also. Remember to use this often when you have a lot of things open, it could slow down. So what you would do is simply press and then hit clear all and it closes everything. By the way, ring, if someone rings your doorbell, it will actually pop up on the screen. You can actually use the speaker on the hub if you don't have a doorbell and you just have ring where you can have the speaker ring like a doorbell and then you can answer the doorbell or the ring on your hub itself and speak to whoever is at your front door you can also seek live view watch your motions everything is available right here on the smart hub all right so now we're going to take a look at something that a lot of people usually have a difficult time figuring out how to connect first what you're going to need is your mobile device here I have my mobile device and then your smart hub you want them connected to the same Wi-Fi network so if you're on your 2.4 gigahertz or your 5 make sure both devices are on the same one now on your Samsung mobile device you are going to need to look for smart view pull down from the top and it should be there as a quick toggle Next, you're gonna do the same thing from your refrigerator and you see Smart View. Go ahead and go ahead and click that on. I said go ahead twice. All right, so click Smart View. Now, what it's gonna do is search for your device. Again, make sure that you're connected and that you have your other device. Here you see one of my Samsung TVs. It's ready to connect to if I'd like. Just a quick note, if you want to utilize your TV, you're going to have to hit OK on the remote, on your one remote to your Samsung TV, as well as your refrigerator, or it will never connect. And I know that some people have a hard time mirroring their TV, but that is the problem. They have to be on the same Wi-Fi network and you have to hit OK on both the TV and the refrigerator. All right, so now on my mobile device, it says start mirroring with Smart View. This will let you know that the, the phone will have access. You're gonna have to hit start now. Now here's what I was talking about. If you don't hit allow, it will never connect. So go ahead and click allow. Before we get into this, now that we're connected, two things you wanna keep in mind. One, whether it be your TV or your mobile device, the hub will ask you one last time if you authorize access from that device. If you do not click allow, it will never connect. So for those of you that are having frustrations, it's either because you're on the wrong Wi-Fi channel network, meaning 2.4 or 5 gigahertz, or you have not hit allow on your TV and or device and our hub. So remember the very first time, it doesn't know who's trying to connect, but once that's done, you don't need to do that again. You can also set it through Samsung SmartThings with your mobile device to automatically connect to screen share when you're within the area. Now, a few things that I love. First and foremost, the ability for live wallpapers. As you can see, this is my favorite. This is called Beta Fish. For those of you that want to download it, it's on the Google Market. Yes, that's called Beta Fish. I know that's that kind of fish, but that's the name of the app. Also, Let's just say your hands are dirty, you're cooking, and somebody calls you. You can actually use the hub to answer your phone. 
you can even dial out. As you can see, if I press my dialer, I can actually dial phone numbers. And as I'm doing it, it's dialing it on my device. Now, what people don't understand about this is you can control the hub with your phone or you can control your phone with your hub. So therefore, that favorite app that's not available is now available. Let's just say you have a favorite game or your kids want to play on the hub. You can actually open up any app you want on your phone and play it on the smart hub. Now, also, if you want to use Google Chrome as your web browser, simply click Chrome. As you can see, it's controlling it on my phone, but it's lightning fast. You can search whatever you'd like and it works and it works well. Now, the other things is the theme. With Samsung phones, you can change the theme to pretty much anything. There's so many of them. But when you do that, it's gonna change the overall look of your hub. This is just so cool. It's something that we use all the time. And I love the fact that no matter what's not built into this, we now have because we can mirror it with our phone. And don't worry, you still have full access to all of your features from the actual hub itself. You can even access the apps while you're connected. The next thing I wanted to add was they added Alexa to the voice. She's gonna listen to me. The great thing about that is, is it used to only be Bixby, but now you have options. So for those of you that like Alexa more, you can use that as your voice assistant. This fridge Really, it just seems as if Samsung has thought about everything that bothered us from the older versions and made it right in this one. Now we're gonna take a look at what you can do on your mobile device using Samsung SmartThings. As you can see, I have my two family hub refrigerators right next to each other so I can get to them easily. You can actually hold down the icon and move it wherever you'd like for your convenience. Once you've got that done, go ahead and open it up and you're going to have several options. First, you're gonna be able to see what's inside of your refrigerator. Now, there's a little trick to this as it does snapshots. So when you click on it, you can actually press this here and refresh the image so you know that you're looking at a live photo of what's inside of your refrigerator. Once that is complete, you also have access to your shopping list. We've talked about this before. You can send items to your shopping list. You can even utilize this to add things from your mobile device or look at things that were added from your hub at any time. And of course, you have the option to use SmartThings Cooking. Now to use this feature, you go to SmartThings, Home, Life, Add Service, and download the SmartThings Cooking. We can look at that in a moment. Here you can also upload your photos and videos. This of course my wife loves. There's all kinds of different things you can do with your photos on your hub. It's really fun and it makes your hub essentially a nice photo frame that just, you know, cycles through all your favorite images as you wish. You can adjust the temperature. You can turn on power cool. For those of you that don't know what power cool is, let's just say you went grocery shopping, you bought a bunch of stuff, it got a little warmer than you'd like in the car, turn on power cool and it will make everything cool down much quicker. You can also adjust your flex crisper here from fridge to meat and fish. So you actually have full control over everything from your app. You can adjust your freezer temperature and you can also use power freeze. Same thing like power cool, except for, you know, the freezer. You can turn on and off your cubed ice and your ice bits separately. And then you can even select your so um, flex zone, excuse me, I have soft freeze, to freeze, soft freeze, meat and fish, beverage, and fruit and veggies. I like soft freeze for my drinks. And uh, let's see what else we got here. Smart Things Cooking is down here. We talked about that. They make it easy to download. Simply just click it. Now that we went ahead and we clicked on Smart Things Cooking, you're gonna go ahead and have to sign in with your Samsung account. Once you do that, of course, you have this extremely useful um, app, if you would, ready to go. Again, you can also access this on your hub. Gives you so many different recipes and ways to cook and utilize your appliances. 
Now that that's activated, you can actually go back here up to your shopping list and you can see that you can add. And again, if there was something added from my refrigerator, it would also be here. Two more segments, we have Home Care Wizard. Again, this is one of the benefits of smart appliances. This actually uses AI to make sure that your Samsung smart appliances are functioning correctly. It also gives you useful notifications like one of my um, refrigerators needs a new filter. Also, it gives you tips and basically the guide to make sure everything is working correctly. That's right here under usage guide. Real quick list, you can see checking the ice maker, removing the bucket, installing the water supply pipe. It also tells you your usage pattern. Example, we opened the door 121 times a day as an average. I have kids. <laughs> that brings us to SmartThings Energy. This is extremely useful, especially to those of you that's trying to save on your energy cost. This actually breaks down by appliance. Again, this has to be compatible with the SmartThings Energy, but it will tell you how much electricity you used and the estimated cost. And you can actually look up each appliance that you have under this. We got these three tabs there. Went ahead and clicked on save just so you can see what you can save here. And then lastly, we'll go to discover. So this has device energy usage, breaks it down in a little chart for you. Usage by hour, so you know when you're using the most electricity. So overall, extremely useful, and it even gives you tips. Just a great thing to have. Taking a quick look down here at the bottom, we have this little toolbar here. Here you have Bixby, so you can access voice control just by touching. This will explain all the different capsules that you can make. The wake up features. And then what you can do, so you can go through this and check out all that Bixby can do and you can access this menu anytime you wanna know more. Down here at the bottom, it's just like a cell phone pretty much at this point. If we press this icon here, this shows you all the apps that you have running and what you wanna do is click clear all to close. Again, continuing on just like your phone, we have the home button, the back button, and then if we click the bell, it just quickly pulls down the top. Here we have our daily tips. By the way, you can pull down at any time and connect or deconnect Wi-Fi, turn on and off your mic, your smart view connection, shut your screen off, and then your quick settings, brightness, as well as your volume. Now, here we have a home screen more or less. Here's Samsung Smart Things. So let's just say you wanted to turn on my office lights, you would just simply turn them on and they're on. Turn them off, they're off. You can control everything connected to Samsung Smart Things on this menu. Now, if you just hit over to the right, you can continue to see all of your devices and scenes, which is really nice to have access to it right here. Here I have my AC, and then just like a phone, if we hold down, you can pull up your windows as well as change your wallpapers or delete the window altogether. So as you can see, if you don't want something just like a phone, you would simply just hit delete and it would be gone. Really easy, again, it really just works like a big tablet. All right, so next we have a couple things. You have the option to have apps or you can put quick from the internet. So more or less as an example, YouTube, if we click on YouTube, it's going to tell us how to add a shortcut. You can simply add a shortcut by pressing this little plus button, and that essentially just makes it quick to get to wherever you wanna go, like an app. Let's jump into software very quickly as this question comes up the most. We are on Tizen 6.0. The question I get asked is why do I not have the latest software? From my knowledge, 
from any refrigerator that has Tizen 3.0 or on should be able to be upgraded by now or sometime very soon in the future to Tizen 6.0. In order to check the latest software, you simply go to settings, go to about family hub and go to software update. And if there's one available, it will allow you to download it. Now, there is something that will change and that is the build. Now, this is different because in different regions or different countries, we have different apps and perhaps different voice assistants. So you might see something on this hub that you don't have on yours. That doesn't necessarily mean anything's wrong. In other words, if you're on, let's say, Tizen 4.0 and you think, oh my gosh, it's been months, I haven't gotten it, it doesn't mean that you're necessarily not. In order to get software updates, you definitely wanna make sure your hub is connected to Wi-Fi at all times and eventually it will come. Now, pay attention to these two here. We have our software 6.0, our build, and then model name. Now, I'm telling you this because when you look up this refrigerator online, it will say Tizen 4.0, even though it is now Tizen 6.0. With this 6.0, when it originally was downloaded, it did not have Alexa. A software update popped up, I got a new build number, and now you will see we have Bixby and Amazon Alexa. A lot of you prefer, so this is a great thing. I just wanted to show you, you have essentially the same things that you have with Bixby you can do with Amazon. So. You have your start of request and end, this so you know when your refrigerator is listening to you and when it stops. I keep the start on and the end off. You can do what you'd like. Things to try, we have kitchen shopping, weather entertainment, essentially anything that you can ask your Alexa at home, you can ask it here. Just a real quick look at some examples for you. But it's very nice that they've added it to the hub. Now we're just waiting for Google, which has been added to their um, TV. So I'm assuming soon it will come. But as of right now, if you're in the United States and you have your 6.0, if it says Bixby and Amazon Alexa, you know you're on the latest build. Let's go through the settings and all of the menus. First, let's go back to connections. Again, we have our Wi-Fi network status, an easy connection, but here we have our Bluetooth and speaker. Now, if you wanna use your hub speaker as a Bluetooth speaker, simply make sure that speaker mode is turned on and follow the one and two, and it's really easy to do, and it's a great sounding speaker. Now we go to display. Under display, we have brightness, which this gets very bright motion detector which will turn on the screen when someone is present this is great if you are just playing photos it also has a clean screen mode what this does is it lets you wipe at the top wipe at the bottom and then hit done that way it doesn't press a bunch of buttons while you're wiping it down very useful here we have our wallpapers love this feature so much to choose from we have weather albums art color and shuffle we have all kinds of different art segments here, whatever you choose. You can see that you have a lot to choose from, but if you want it to just flip through all, you just go ahead and click on slideshow. Once slideshow is on, it selects everything for you. Now, if you want to use your own photos, you also have album. You can upload photos right from your mobile device very easily. Anything that you do choose, remember to hit apply to save it, and then it will take place right away. Don't forget you have home screen. Home screen's a little different. You just have the option of pictures or colors. And again, whatever you choose, go ahead and press apply. Now, tap view. Tap view is very useful. Double tap on the screen to easily see what's inside. This is great if you want to see what's inside with the cameras and not open up your refrigerator all the time. Cover screen, whether you want that on or off. You can also 
Start as low as 15 seconds to five minutes. And then you can go to two hours from two minutes. Moving on, we're going to sound. Sound, we have media um, system and then touch sounds. If you like to have that um, feedback when you're touching the screen, go ahead and click that to on. I don't, but it's up to you. Notifications, you can choose whether you want it to preview or not. I like this on. Samsung account, that's where you would sign in and out. This needs to be done, of course, to use Samsung Smart Things. Now, Bixby Voice, here is where you would set this up. Now, you can choose the style if you want a man's voice or a woman's voice. You also can choose sound feedback so you know when Bixby's listening and when he or she stops. This is the same thing on like a Google Home. And then of course you can set the sensitivity so if it's going off too much you can lower this i just keep it at medium all right moving on security you do have the option so if you hit enable you can set a pin once you are ready go ahead and put in your pin press set and then it's done and then you can set the restrictions for whatever you'd like next we have storage here you can see how much storage your apps and your images are taking as well as your available storage. So this is nice to keep tabs that you're not too full and erase photos if you need to. You can set different languages, date and time. Of course, date and time will be automatically done when you're connected to Wi-Fi. Accessibility, we have the screen reader option, text to speech, you can set different size font. I like it extra huge, as they call it. You can go to grayscale, negative color. And then of course you can adjust this to whatever is best for you. About Family Hub, this is where you can check for software updates. I recommend to check and make sure that you are on the latest, with which at this point you should be on ties in 6.0 last but not least in this section we have the help and contact us you have your manual remote management you can send feedback so it's pretty nice you can actually make sure that everything is running smoothly right on your hub now we're looking at the inside of course we have been using it for a while this is how i have it set up i thought this might be helpful I like to put anything that my kids want to get to most in the day here. That way they're not opening up the main door, letting the cold air out too often. As you can see, our water jug has been filled. Then again, you have your water dispensing right here. Remember, this does have two ice makers, but you cannot um, use an ice maker at this part. You have to scoop it out. We are now back on the inside on the main refrigerator on top you know what i've noticed about the way samsung has the placement is they really want us to utilize the doors in this situation give you a better look sorry about that so as you can see the shelves if you put a standard size gallon milk it's all the way to the top now a court of course you can adjust the bottom but if you want to have any space really the best option is to utilize the doors i still use the back side of where i have the um, beverages and the water dispenser you know you can put some stuff there you can also have them tilted like that um, there's some extra space here and then again we have our sauces and my wife's creamer the drawers i have meat and cheese in one and vegetables in the other and then you can see the rest now we're looking at the bottom again i don't have it all the way filled out but i like to keep this um full of drinks and i like it um on icy if you would not freezer just one below which is called soft freeze on the left you can see you have plenty of space for what you need but what i wanted to show you mainly is the ice let's check that out so as you can see the ice maker has made plenty of ice here we have our smaller ice and the larger there is something i wanted to mention here right below each of these says test switch 
What happens is there is buttons on each side. If you're having any problems or you wanna empty out the ice maker and make sure it fills up with water, you simply hold down the switch. It will dump whatever ice is made and it will make sure that each ice tray is filled up to start making the proper amount of ice. This can happen, you know, if all of a sudden your ice stops making enough or you just notice it's just not performing where you want it, make sure you go ahead and do that and that should take care of your problem. Once you're ready to go, make sure everything is put back in its position and that you shut the door tightly and this should make plenty of ice. So now I'm going to go through all the specifications. I like to do this so in case you need to know something specific, you will know whether or not this will be the right fit for your home. All right, so the refrigerator design, this is counter depth. So you know I do have it pulled forward a little bit for the video, but it does sit pretty much flush with the counters and countertops. This is the black stainless. Again, I still have the protective plastic on it, so it's gonna look slightly different. This is also available in stainless steel. Now, it has a total of four doors and the depth is 28 and a half. So the refrigerator features, auto fill water pitcher, humidity controlled crispers, gallon bins, gallon door bins. So you can put full size gallons into the door. Um, it features two drawers, LED lighting. It does have an internal digital display. It has an internal filtered water dispenser and has four total shelves. Again, this is for the refrigerator. It has slide in shelf, spill proof shelves, and fingerprint resistant finish. The water and ice dispenser, it has a wine rack, an automatic ice maker, and showcase door. I wanted to make a quick note, there is no way to use the dispenser for ice. It only dispenses water. The ice is in the bottom only. You must get it out with a scooper or your cup. That's something that a lot of people have asked. There is no way you know, to get the automatic ice out of the water dispenser. Flex zone temperature zones. This features a total of five temperature zones. Again, that's what keeps your food fresh for longer and it does a great job. Now, again, we have two different types of ice, but the ice makers are in the bottom and you saw that we had interior lights down there also. The family hub window size is 27.5, it's made of glass. The actual display is 21.5, featuring a full HD 1080 by 1920p that is upgraded to the standard definition um, tablet or screen from before, so that's nice. Now, this features a capacitive touch display. It has a 1.7 gigahertz quad core processor, 2.5 gigs of RAM up from 512 and one gig respectively. So again, it boosted it to 2.5 and it has a total of eight gigs of flash memory up from one and two gigs. So everything has gotten better. Features Bluetooth Wi-Fi connectivity combo and has Tizen 6.0, that is the hub version or software version. This has one speaker that's 25 watts and it sounds great and it's right here at the bottom and it just shoots right out and it sounds great. It does have a USB port that's open in the top of the door here. Um, this is of course Energy Star certified and an energy consumption of 631 kWh a year. Total capacity 22.5 cubic foot, refrigerator capacity is 13.7, so again above here, and that's if you don't decide to use this bottom of course. Freezer capacity is 8.8 .8 cubic foot, and then as far as product dimensions with hinges and handles, I'm not going to read them all for you, just I'm going to list them right here. The product weight is 337.3 pounds. Shipping weight is 359.3 pounds. Now, warranty, you get the standard one year, if you would, bumper to bumper warranty. Five years on parts and labor of sealed refrigeration, and then 10 years parts and labor on sealed refrigeration systems only. 10 years parts and five years labor on a digital inverter compressor 
the evaporator, condenser, dryer, and connecting tubing. That pretty much wraps up part two on Samsung's brand new smart four-door flex with family hub. Now, again, I went over everything in detail through this past two videos, but I wanted to just re-emphasize what a great product this is. I highly recommend it. Not only will it keep your food fresh, it gives you features that you just can't find anywhere else, and it looks beautiful. As always, I'd like to slow things down for a moment and remind you life is so short. Don't forget to love your family. Take care of each other. The world is a mess right now, and the only people that can change it is you and I. It is amazing to me how the smallest act of kindness can go such a long way. Go out today and do a small act of kindness for someone because it's just something that we can all do to make a difference. And if we just do it, we can remind each other that we are all in this together. I wanna remind you all that I do YouTube for you and you only, so if you need me, you can, of course, anytime reach me in the comment section or on social media, come follow me on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at JB Tech Fanatic. I will help you in any way that I can. And you know, as always, just I want to say thank you for watching my video. I invite you to subscribe one last time. I can't wait to talk to you in the comments and see you in the next video. And until then, I'm JB Tech Fanatic and I'm out. Peace.